Hello and welcome to Parametric Blocks for Roadway Design presented by Eric Arneson. A little bit about Mr. Arneson. He's a professional engineer and he's part of the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. MDU team, Methods Development, that provides support, technical expertise, and future direction for highway engineering tools. He has 27 years of experience with WISDOT in highway design, construction, GIS, and supporting engineering software. He has 12 years of experience in civil 3 d and is the team lead on training and communication. My name is Paul Kirkendall, and I'll be assisting with Q&A moderation and have just a couple housekeeping notes before we get started. First, a big shout out to all of our sponsors for helping make this virtual workshop happen. Thank you so much. Also, an evaluation link will be provided at the end of the session, as well as a large email at the end of the day. Please complete it to help us improve our event. Evaluation completion is also necessary to qualify for your PDHs. Now let's start today's session. Hey everybody, welcome to this session of the Civil 3D Workshop. My name is Eric Arneson. I work at Wisconsin Department of Transportation and this session is on parametric blocks for roadway design. Uh, I've been doing uh, roadway design and building and using technology in best ways possible for a long, long time. Uh, I also am the builder and maintainer of the knowledge base, uh, the C3DKB, and I also do the parametric blocks that uh, WizDot has published. If you're interested in getting your hands on the blocks that I'm going to show you today, uh, you can anybody can download our package at the link provided and go to town, play around with them, see what you can do yourself. So why am I presenting this class? Well, there's a lot of videos on parametric blocks out there, but very, very few of them are focused at roadway. They're all about buildings or a door here or a toilet there, that kind of stuff. And in roadway, there's a lot of issues around uh, transitioning between curves and tangents between curves. And so hopefully this will give you a little bit more of a sense of parametric blocks focused at roadway design needs. And they are the way to store geometry in AutoCAD Civil 3D. Uh, if you want to kind of put together any kind of 2D geometry that is parametric, uh, this is definitely the way uh, to do it. Lastly, uh, these are my three top, like, you need to get to uh, <laughs> an interesting level of understanding to know how to use these things in AutoCAD. Uh, number one is shape files. You get to use uh, hexadecimal codes to build little shapes. That's fun. Uh, AutoCAD fonts. I've never done an AutoCAD font. I hope to never have to. Those are font building is a whole science magic unto itself. I'm going to put parametric blocks on like the top end of obscurity. I haven't met anybody else that has done parametric blocks for roadway. I'd love to. I'd love to talk to somebody about them, but hopefully this will give you a little bit, even if you're not somebody who's going to be building parametric blocks, uh, maybe it will give you an appreciation of what they can do and, you know, how valuable they can be for you and your organization. So most people have some sort of uh, knowledge, expertise with static uh, blocks. Classic ones that we have in our workflows are sign blocks or just, you know, a, a static, this piece of geometry over and over and over again, reusable uh, throughout all your D DWGs. Awesome. So a parametric block can, well, duh, go parametric on you. These are able to adjust and shift. Um, if you did want to go into a truly 3D parametric, uh, you've got to get into Inventor for that. Obviously, we're not covering that today. So variables within parametric blocks in AutoCAD Civil 3D are controlled primarily by three things. One is a constraint parameter. 
and this is a dimensional constraint. So this is a number or a variable number from such and such a level to another that an object can be controlled by. Typically it's like a length or it might be like a radius of a curve or an angle between two objects. Uh, the next constraint is geometric constraints. So these are constraints that are between geometric elements and they uh, have a constraining element and then an element that is constrained by the other one. We'll go through all of those. The last one is really in constraint parameters, but it's, it's, it's a little nuance in that you can have equations. So it doesn't have to be just a number and sliding rule. You can say, okay, if this value over here is whatever, I'm going to perform a function on it and get the constraint for this other object over here. So those are the primary ones. A really prime example of that equation information is the angle of a curve. You, you can't, is the length, excuse me, you can't directly input the length of a curve with geometric constraints. So you need to be able to do this geometry on it, uh, where the angle is equal to the length times 360 divided by two divided by pi divided by various classic uh, high school uh, geometry. And for those of you paying attention, that, that is the third most valuable piece of information <laughs> that I'm gonna give you today, is that the length of the curve needs to be run through the angle. We are always dealing with lengths of curves uh, in our geometry, and that's how you need to do it in parametric blocks. And last but not least, you know, uh, you've got to give a little bit of uh, end user uh, input or control over these things, and that's where parameter grips come in. So you associate parameter grips uh, typically with the constraint parameters, and then a user can uh, grip edit uh, those constraints or they can go into the properties window and directly edit those. So I've got some rules for parametric blocks that I'd like to share with you. So before you start, my number one rule is find someone else to do them for you. These are kind of, like I said, it's the most obscure thing I've run into in Civil 3D and AutoCAD. I don't think every designer in any organization should be building their own parametric blocks. Find somebody who's uh, really interested in it, ready to dive in, purchase them the adult beverage of their choice and say, good job, keep going. Um, because this is, is <laughs> it's, it's a deep, deep rabbit hole to climb into. But if you are bound and determined, you want to try this on your own and get into it, <laughs> these are the ones past that. Uh, first off is figure out your base point for the block. This is always uh, critical for any block where the the main grip point is, but in in parametric blocks it's really important because that geometry has to all, it essentially gets built around that base point. You have to build out and out and out. Now, if you pick a really good point you can make it easy or, or possible. And if you pick a really bad point, it can be virtually impossible. Figure out the base geometry. So you gotta think about this geometry before you dive into it. You, you have to keep on building out and building out. And, and you have to understand what geometry is dependent on other geometry and build it in that fashion. So that goes into the, the hierarchy here. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to be building out elements and then constraining them. And then once you have some constrained elements, you can start building some geometric constraints between them. And then, you know, just kind of keep going on from there. And you're always going to be testing and trying and seeing if it worked and, oh, I broke it and backstepping. But you need to know that hierarchy of geometry. So the, the, Blocks that I have are all built from standard detail drawings. Uh, one is uh, this cute little guy, the end of the Midwest guardrail system, the end of the beam guard, uh, where we've got a little bump out and some 
uh, geometry for the widening of the roadside and for the uh, hardware as well. And we've got our at grade side road intersections, A, B, C, and D, those we've got in parametric. And last but not least, rural driveways. And this is what I'm going to be using today as a sample to try and show you the steps uh, that I've gone through for building these here. So in Civil 3D, somewhere I have it, here it is. So here are two blocks uh, I'll cover in the, in the interface here. So if you've installed our WizDot package, basically all of our interface is in three tabs, WizDot Survey, Design, and Sheets. If you go into WizDot.Design, kind of right in the middle here is a parametric blocks uh, for beam guard, intersection, and rural driveways. And those pop out in the tool palettes for you. These two blocks are that beam guard eats. So this is focused at the design, the edge lines. And this is a little more detailed block for actually getting into a hardware installation location. Uh, here is a, I just threw this at a wacky angle, but this is a, this is one of our uh, intersection blocks. As you can see here, this is what we're going to get into with uh, the, uh, not the geometric constraint, the parameter constraints, uh, where we've got values here, and some of them have grips, some of them don't. So it, I know my R1 is uh, this radius right here. So if I type in a 50, uh, if I type in a 50, that'll bump out and everything kind of angles around it. Obviously the, the big one here is our, I call it Q, it's, I think it's a theta in the SDD, but basically this is our angle with our uh, main line. So if I type a 84 in there, the whole thing shifts a little bit and I can do a grip edit as well if I have my focus out of that properties block apparently and I get a little bit of uh, rubber banding super cool anyways parametric okay because this drawing over here not every single one of our intersections is a perfect 90 on a perfectly tangent road with you know, everything like that. So the parameters let us get a lot closer to field conditions depending on whatever the project is. And I can't get there. Here we go. And last but not least is our rural driveway. So one of the things that I do a lot on these blocks is I've got what I call a design mode and a graphics mode. The graphics is like kind of plan ready. It's just the stuff that you need to see to uh, design or put that information in. Design mode's got a lot of, it's got all the grips. It's got maybe some construction geometry that might be helpful to the end user to see. And a lot of times I'll throw some notes in there for the operation of the block. So that's kind of the full Monty finished block. So once you begin on these, like I was saying, the order of the constraints is huge. You can try something that in your brain you think this should work and it doesn't work. Uh, you try it a different way and then it works and you can keep moving on. But it's super, super hard to figure out how these constraints are applied. If If you've built it, you can Probably if the gray matter is supporting you get to, okay, it, it was this one first and then that one. But um, like if I jump into, if I take this block right here and I do a right click block editor on it. Okay, I can see I've got all these blue lines are my dimensions. Okay, so they're my radiuses and they're my lengths. And I've got, and all these little glyphs are my geometric constraints and that's all fine, but it's all geometry. It's just sitting there. So I've never attempted to pull apart somebody else's block, but 
I think it would be really, really hard. And when I've had to go back and edit my blocks, uh, a lot of times I end up kind of ripping out all kinds of chunks and building it back up to, to get them to where I want to be. It's just kind of part of the deal. When you do ge geometric constraints, it's usually two things and you have to do, you click on the constraining object first. So that kind of control object, and then the one that is going to be constrained second. Okay. It's not really obvious that that's the order that they need to be in, but that is how it needs to be in. Next thing, if I wanted two lines, so say this is my line that I want to, uh, awesome graphics here, right? Say this is my line that I want to control this line with, okay? If I click on this one, say I do that, and do this one, if I have them overlapping already, like I'm smart and I'm helping the computer out, it'll say, I can't do that. You're already there, dude. Sorry. Whenever you want to constrain elements, you put it kind of close and then you click, click, and then it'll snap to it. It'll make a whole lot of sense on the screen rather than my fingers, but never, ever, ever lay geometry exactly where you want it. You got to put it kind of close and then apply the constraint to it. And then that works fine. That's the second most valuable piece of knowledge that I have for you today. I'm not a huge fan of test block. There's a test block functionality in there. I find it a lot slower. I usually just drop the block into model space and do saves out and, and bounce around to do my editing there. If you've ever wondered where construction elements are really meant to be, this is it. So construction elements let you build kind of elemental geometry and then turn it off. So it's, it's, invisible to the end user, but it can control the geometry of 2D polylines or whatever you have. So this is where construction state comes in. And if there's geometry that you want to expose to the end user, but maybe not always have visible, that's where visibility states come into the equation. It's not probably strictly necessary, but a lot of times we're doing uh, 2D polylines of stuff. We want to do line to curve to line or, or what have you. So I found it a lot easier to build elemental pieces like with construction elements or, or what have you, and then geometrically constrain the polylines to that geometry. You can do it on 2D polylines, but it gets a little, I don't know. I, I have a lot better luck when I just build the basic elements and then string a, a, a open or closed polyline along it. And this is the last thing I got to tell you before we dive into uh, actually having some fun here. But before you release it out into the wild, this is just like any kind of work. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. So check all your properties, layer, color, line weight, all that good stuff. Check your visibility states. Check that the thing works. And if you've got multiple visibility states, it can work in one and it can go flying off uh, in another one. And that's not really awesome. So make sure you check your stuff before you do it. And also check your parameters so that the show state is set correctly. So the show state is whether or not the end user is going to be able to see these values. If you build up you know, 18 different radius values, and you only want the end user to see three, you should only show them three so that they're not getting, you know, confused or overwhelmed by what is all this stuff and, and or worse yet, trying editing things that they really shouldn't be editing. So just, you got to do a double check. Ideally, have somebody else do a double check on your work uh, before it goes out into production. All right, enough talky talky. Let's get into the worky worky. So, um, let's see here. So today I'm going to go through a driveway, which seems pretty simple, right? Um, I'm going to talk you through the process that I use. So this is going to go along the edge of a roadway 
and it's kind of variable on the distance here. And just from experience, we know that this is also going to be variable on the length of the driveway. You know, maybe it's really short like this, but maybe it goes even beyond these curves, you know, and maybe these curves are different. You know, there's, there's probably some like it's 25 foot radius. Well, sometimes it's 25, sometimes it's 20, sometimes it's 40. So that's going to be a variable. And there's also going to be a, I, I want to build these for the possibility that they're on curves. So uh, generally speaking on these roadway edge type of blocks, which is basically everything here, I've got a, a tangent section, a inside curve and an outside curve block. Could you build one on multiple geometries? Y you can, but it, it, since all this geometry it's, is dependent, it's like, is this, where is the tangent? Where is the curve? You, you can get into a whole bunch of uh, scenarios really super quick. So <laughs> I haven't gotten there. But uh, this one, we're going to try, I think, inside curve. We're going to try an inside curve one on this one. So I'm going to build the, so the center, I'm going to call the center of this block the center of the driveway and on the edge of pavement. That is going to be my base point for this block and build it out from there. So there's going to be an edge of roadway that's going to be curved. We're going to have our center line of driveway that's going to be able to uh, turn an angle. And we're going to build out the edges of the driveway from there. So let's see uh, how we can do on that. I'm going to get out of my block editor here. Okay, and this is a this is a tangent one and I'm going to build an inside curve one. So I'm going to go to my insert tab and on the block panel, there is the create command. So I'm going to do create and I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to see what my naming convention before was. Maybe I haven't saved it in here. I'm going to call this, Rural driveway inside of curve. And I'm not going to, I'm going to start from scratch on this sucker. So I'm going to create it. I'm going to open it in block editor and I'm going to click OK. No, but no objects. No, I don't want to, I don't want objects. I'm going to start from scratch here. So first thing I'm going to do is find my zero, zero, and I'm going to do a tangent edge to get lined up. So I'm going to L for line and I'm going to start at negative 50, oh, 50 comma zero. And then I'm going to go to 50 comma zero. So the midpoint of this line is zero, zero. So let's call that uh, the roadway edge. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is my center line of the driveway. So I'm going to type in a line. Now this is where I'm going to, this is the one time where you actually want to put the point in where you want it geometrically constrained. All of these ones here are really good. And if, if I wanted, if I wanted to do it with a coincident, yeah, let's do it with coincident. Sure. So I'm going to call this my center line of my rural driveway it looks awesome, right? Uh, not yet. We'll get it there. First, I'm going to make sure that it's a hundred feet long. I want to work with a hundred foot and it's going to be able to stretch, uh, the length of my driveway. So I'm going to use a, an align constraint parameter and I'm going to hit enter for an object and select my object and pull that off a little bit. And right now it's 50 feet long. I want that to be a hundred feet long. Boom. Okay. It's hundred feet long. And I've got one grip parameter over here. That's going to be my end of construction that I'm going to use. Now I'm going to geometrically constrain this point 
to the midpoint of this line, which is 0, 0. So I'm going to use a coincident geometric constraint. I'm going to click that. I'm going to select my constraining geometry first. So I'm going to get a midpoint snap on that line. And it says now select second point. And I'm going to select the end point of this line. Boom. OK, so this block would do a little bit Still not quite enough to make it interesting. So let's at least throw in a uh, angular constraint. So let's do an angular constraint. And the first line is going to be our baseline here. And second line is going to be this one here. And I'm going to throw it out kind of in this range maybe. And I'm going to change that to like an 80 degree angle with something a little more, um, a little more perpendicular than that. Okay. So I've got a grip angle on that, uh, a grip on that constraint. I've got a grip on that constraint. I'm going to save this block. And yeah, I know I'm not fully constrained. I'm fine with that. And we're going to, I'm going to lock in this line to make sure it doesn't move around on me. Sometimes that can happen as well. So I'm going to use the fix geometric constraint and I'm going to fix the midpoint here to zero, zero. Okay. So that is locked in. This object isn't going anywhere. This object's got some, uh, parameters on it. I'm going to close the block editor, save it. Now I'm going to drop that in with uh, my insert block panel insert command it's going to populate eventually one more time call started it with an r rural driveway inside curve okay let's drop that down here Oh, nuts. Put the, I thought it was 50-50, but we'll move that grip point. But I just wanted to show you how this thing is going to operate now. So this script, I can make longer and shorter. Haven't constrained it at all. And this is my angle. So that's kind of my base geometry. Okay. That's a, that's a pretty good start for getting everything built out from there. So let's fix this up here. I deleted that fixed uh, constraint there. I'm going to select this whole deal and M for move. And my base point is going to be right there. And second point is going to be zero comma zero. Let's try a line at starting at zero, zero. Didn't work. Try it one more time. Move it. Specify base point. And I'm just going to snap it. There we go. Okay, so we've got that fixed. Now we can lock this guy back in. There we go. Close it. Save it just to confirm for myself. Yep. So I've got my base point there. Awesome. Select it, right click block editor. And let's keep rolling. Now you start building up these constraints and all of a sudden you got D one through 18 and ang one through whatever, and you don't know what they are. So let's give these things some more meaningful names. I'm going to select and I'm just going to do it in the quick properties here, but I'm going to call this ang, uh, guess what? DWI for driveway. Amazing. So now I know that's the angle of my driveway. And this is going to be my D, uh, I'm going to call this exist. Oh no, driveway length. D driveway. All right, so now those make a little more sense. Now I'm going to, I told you I was going <laughs> to add a curve. We're going to do that. But the way that 
circles are controlled in AutoCAD is by the center point. So if I want to control a circle that always stays put on its edge, I've got to build a radius line to get to the center of the circle and then squish it up and down from there. So I'm going to L for line, do a line, and I want this always to be vertical in the block. So I'm going to constrain it vertically. There we go. Now that's always going to be perfectly vertical. And then I'm going to make this a thousand foot, just something in the realm of possibility for a roadway curve. So let's do a, a vertical constraint on that one. Uh, enter for the object option, click it to select, pull the dimension line over. That's really short. We don't want to have it 49 feet. We want it to be a thousand feet. <clears throat> Okay, and this one, I really don't want end users grabbing this because this is going to be a construction element. So I'm just going to window select the grip and delete it. So now this is what a constraint without a grip looks like. So I want to lock in this point up here, and that's my coincidence. So I'm going to click on the coincident and select first point is right there. Select second point is that one, and it moves. Hurrah. This is going to be my, what is this going to be? My radius of paved shoulder. That doesn't look like a radius, does it? Now we'll figure that out. So I want to put a cur a circle uh, attached to that. Maybe let's, uh, I'm going to call this. D rad paved shoulder. And then I'm going to put a circle, C enter for circle. And I'm going to put a point over there and there. And I'm going to constrain the radius of this circle like this. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to reference the D rad paved shoulder variable so that this circle is always uh, that radius of paved shoulder. So D rad paved shoulder, enter. It just turned 1,000 foot radius. So that's great. And I'm going to not give them a, a grip on that one. Now I want the center of this thing to be where the end line here is. So I've constrained it vertically, so it's not going to change direction. I have constrained one endpoint of it, so it's always going to stay at my zero, zero. So this should always float along. So let's do a coincident. We'll pick the controlling point. All right, uh, come on. Always look for that red. Uh, maybe I didn't have a command line. Try it again. Perpendicular. I don't want perpendicular. I want coincident. There we go. There's my controlling point. And second point is going to be the center of the circle. There we go. Excellent. So now I think this is going to do what I want it to do. Let's save it, close it, test it, and give it a shot. All right, so I got my angle. I got my line here. Let's pick this. Now, if I change this to a 5,000, 500, excuse me, foot paved shoulder radius, it should do that. And let's really crank it down, 200. Okay, so this arc is staying tangent at that line and it's staying in the midpoint. And my radius, my, <clears throat> excuse me, driveway center line is moving nicely. Okay, that's some good base geometry. I'm gonna save my working file here and keep moving on. So now I'm going to try and develop the uh, proposed width of the driveway. So, so put together a, a, a width of the, not the existing, but the proposed. So this could be wider than what we're matching into. And since we're on an angle, and I know that 
I, I, I want to get these curves to line up right, I'm going to have to do it in, in two, in two lines because they could be uh, different. They, they're not always going to match exactly like this one here. So I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about. If I, if I change my angle of the driveway, it's these two lines that I'm building here. So those are going to be uh, perpendicular to the center line of my driveway. And they're going to be where the uh, curves end. And then there is a tangent section possible from the end of that width, which is going to be at, should be at least as wide or wider than my existing width that the uh, tangent will come into. So let's get back into block editor, uh, select my block, right click block editor and draw some lines here. So I'm going to draw L for line and just throw it out here. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with my constraint parameter. I'm going to go aligned and enter for the object option, pick it, grip it, and I'm going to make this 10 feet. And I'm going to, I probably want a grip on the other edge. So I'm going to rotate this around so that it's facing out because I'm going to put my D1 on the left side here. So that's, that's fine. I'm going to constrain this to the endpoint to be touching, and I'm going to constrain it perpendicular to this line. So I'm going to start with my perpendicular constraint, select my first controlling object, and then select the one that will be controlled. So now I'm perpendicular. And now I don't care where on the object it is. I just want to make sure it's on the object. So I'm going to, I'm not going to pick an endpoint precisely. It's just going to be on the object and then it's going to float with circles that I'm going to build that are you'll see when I get there okay so let's I'm just going to move this guy to be a little closer to where I'm going to want it to end up and this this is you might need to press the I believe button on this one here so we're going to go coincident and we're going to enter for the object option select the center line and then the uh, select the object to constrain. We're going to constrain it on that point. And there it jumped. Now, it is not constrained to that singular point. It's constrained to the object. So um, I'm going to keep working on this side. The, the other side would end up being uh, the same process uh, again. So now what I want to do is a circle with a radius that is touching this and that. Okay, so C for circle, enter, and I'll throw this down and give it a radius um, constraint. Select the circle, and I'm gonna call this, instead of rad two, this is going to be R1. And let's call R1 uh, we're just on a little driveways here, so let's call this, maybe it's a uh, 25 foot radius, okay? And I'll leave that grip in, that's fine. So now we're going to do some tangent. <laughs> we're going to do some tangent stuff. Um, I'm trying to remember if I wanted to do this coincident first and then tangent or not. I think I want to go tangent first. So let's, I'm going to go tangent and select my first one and select my second one. That's the easy one. Well, let's see how this goes. Um, so now we want to do a coincident on uh, this object to this point. So enter for the object option, pick the object. Pick the endpoint if you can get the snap right. Okay, it worked. Now it looks weird. Okay, I get it. Um, 
this can happen sometimes and I haven't figured out exactly how to fix this one with these so it's actually part of the the function of the block right now but I can grab this one and do an M for move and I can slide it down and you can see it's going to work a little bit more like I would expect it to except it jumped over onto the other side and that's not good um, I think I just moved it too far let's move from here and no snaps uh, down to oh, maybe do it near a snap all for the love of Pete come on you want to move I know you do and for move from there to about there okay magic happens <laughs> let's close the block editor save and exit and are you serious this is going to do what you want it to do yeah it is so let's grab the uh good old uh, radius or the uh, angle of driveway and look at that now it it goes like that now if i change my radius to something smaller let's call this maybe a 15 footer okay it squeezes it in so you can kind of see that basic geometry uh, starting up there and then developing the other side uh, would be similar um, to give you an idea before one thing that I want to cover before I get out of here sorry I'll get back in is is how the so so this is kind of the base geometry and I'm not going to go into the details of the other side I want to give you a little short buzz of how to do a polyline that is attached to this geometry so I'm going to go back into my block here an editor and so I want to do from this point up to this point over and I'm just going to fill in this little area here obviously it would be for a large area but I'm going to work with this geometry I'm going to pick a oh I'm going to pick a layer with a little color to it um, instead of zero so I'm going to go down to like a P I don't know something yellow orange sure uh, that's crazy stuff all right P map P roadway crazy okay uh, let's do a saw cut pavement edge pavement edge is good we'll call this pavement edge so I'm going to do a PL for polyline now I want to make sure it's an arc a line a line and then an arc right so again make the geometry kind of close but not exact okay so we're going to specify a point here and we're going to switch over a for arc option down to here-ish L for the line option again over up a for arc again in that range escape now we geometrically constrain this so the the endpoints are basically going to be coincident blocks and then you have to set the uh, arcs or the radiuses of the arcs to be identical to what you're snapping to so let's step through that process so coincident and we're going to pick the object and we're going to constrain to this object and then select the point that guy and this is the magic double constraint so we're going to do that again to the other arc so that that it, it basically inherits the tangent to both uh, information so fire up that again and select the object this one and then select the point there okay so now what now when those two arcs slide that point is always going to be stuck where they are tangent okay this one is just a geometrically constraint onto that point so that is a this point gets that point again this point that point 
just rinse and repeat here, uh, center that point. And then this one needs the same uh, double constraint as that. So we're going to do coincident, object option, this object, this point, repeat, object option, this object, same point. Okay, we're, we're really close here. Uh, sometimes the equal constraint works. Sometimes you got to type in the value. Don't ask me what makes it happen, but I'm going to try the equal one. Uh, this one controls, make that one jump, huzzah. And same here, repeat. This one controls, that one gets moved. So now I've got a polyline that is going to respond to those parameters. Close it, save it, slip it on a biscuit. All right, now, is it gonna work? Let's pick it, and here's our roadway angle. Move it, and it moves with, okay? Pretty cool. This should be, this should be sliding up and down. Something's a little goofy with it. Um, that frankly doesn't surprise me a heck of a lot with this block. It sometimes you need to reload it and it's just weird. But the good thing is, is this polyline is being responsive to the constraints that I put around it. If I turn all those elements to uh, construction state and make them invisible, you can hopefully get uh, an idea of how you could quickly get to uh, something effectively like this. One of the other kind of neat things that I did with this block is with this closed uh, poly line, um, not only do we have the geometry, but we're able to output the area of that from a field and connect it live so that when I've got the the design version up, it's I can pick this, maybe uh, lengthen it out a little bit, escape. Uh, I think this is going to require a save to fire off, so I'm going to save it. And you can see it updated the square foot. So that is my less than an hour talk on parametric blocks. Um, if you uh, said, wow, that's really awesome, I want to do that, uh, you can definitely contact me. Uh, good luck, God bless. If you said, man, that is super cool, I don't know, half the stuff you did, I totally get it. This is a really deep pro uh, piece of the product, uh, super, super powerful, um, and I hope you learned something and had some fun while we did it.